research into nearby Paddington train station stumbled upon plans. Which reveal this was the oldest remaining iron bridge designed by one of Britain's most important architects, Isambard Kingdom Brunel. So demolition stopped and a conservation project began. It was led by Dr Stephen Brindle. So tell me how old this bridge is that we're standing on. 1838 to 9, so it's 165 years old, yes. It's an important discovery, isn't it? Yes. Uh, well, I, I think it's very important. As his first iron bridge, it's an important moment in his career and in the history of, of engineering. And so what happens to it now? Um, well, as you see, um, it's being taken apart very carefully. And because it's a good design, it's in good condition, it's coming apart well, we should be able to use all the parts. And the plan is to rebuild it um, a, as a pedestrian bridge, not a road bridge, about 200 yards up the same canal, and, and everyone will be able to, to see and use it as a bridge. The bridge was the work of Isambard Kingdom Brunel, the greatest engineer the world has ever known. It stands near the beginning of a rail network he built from scratch, the Great Western. Born in 1806, he was 20 years old when he got his first big break. His father made him chief engineer on a revolutionary tunnel he was building under the River Thames in London. Up until then, the only way to cross the river after London Bridge was by a slow and overcrowded ferry. So this tunnel, wide enough to take two streams of traffic, was a huge step forward. And it's still in use today as part of the London Tube network. From the start, Isambard was a workaholic, not stopping for 36 hours and even sleeping in the tunnel. By November 1827, it was finished and it was a triumph. He was so proud of his achievement that he held a banquet in the tunnel to celebrate. It was a lavish affair, hard to imagine in the tunnel today. As a passionate designer, Brunel was fortunate to be living at the beginning of a new industrial age in Britain. Railways were starting to spread the length and breadth of the nation. Brunel created one of the most extensive railway networks, the Great Western Railway. And in the process, he built the world's largest spanning brick-built bridge, two huge viaducts, four major bridges and seven tunnels. The Great Western Railway changed rail travel forever. But one of Brunel's most amazing feats of rail engineering was the box tunnel in Bath. At two miles in length, it was the longest of its day. People thought it was monstrous. It was possibly his biggest indulgence. The angle at which he designed the tunnel allowed the sun to shine directly through it on just one day a year, the 9th of April, his birthday. But for once, he got his calculations wrong by three days, so the sun actually shines through the tunnel on the 6th of April every year. Despite his many achievements, Isambard Kingdom Brunel's most famous design is this, the Clifton Suspension Bridge in Bristol. In 1831, Brunel won a competition for architects to design a bridge to cross the River Avon. He called the design his first child and his darling. Brunel sadly died before it was completed, but the bridge is prized for being both a beautiful and practical structure, which is famous all over the world. It remains one of Brunel's greatest achievements. But Isambard Kingdom Brunel's imagination didn't stop with changing the way people travelled on land. He wanted to invent a ship which could cross the Atlantic without running out of fuel. He called it the SS Great Western and it set sail in 1837. It was a huge success and crossed the Atlantic for many years to come. Brunel's next brainwave came to him while he was recovering from an accident. It was the SS Great Britain. Like his bridge in Paddington, this ship was to be totally made of iron, the first of its kind. It would have a single propeller that would make it quicker than any other ship of its day. 
But the Great Britain wasn't the success Brunel was hoping for. For a start, it was too wide to get through Bristol Dock, which had to be partially dismantled as a result. And then on her ninth trip, she ran aground off the Irish coast, and it was a year before the Great Britain could be salvaged. Brunel was furious. I'm disgusted that the finest ship in the world should be left lying like a useless saucepan, kicking about on the most exposed shore you can imagine. But it was his last ship, the Great Eastern, which finally destroyed Brunel. He teamed up with marine engineer John Scott Russell to create the biggest ship of the age. Building began in 1854 and suffered huge setbacks. Work continued day and night until it was finished in 1858. The ship was hugely ambitious and extravagant. When the Great Eastern was finally launched at 1.42pm on the 31st of January 1858, Brunel was exhausted. He was given an impromptu standing ovation from his workforce, but while inspecting his ship, Brunel suffered a stroke and collapsed. Brunel continued to work from his sickbed, which is where news reached him that there had been a huge explosion in the engine room of his beloved ship. <laughs> He suffered another massive stroke and died six days later on the 15th of September, 1859. Although his last project hadn't been the success he'd hoped, the techniques used greatly improved the way ships are built and many of his methods are still used today. Brunel will be best remembered for building things to last, like Clifton Suspension Bridge, the Box Tunnel, the Great Western Railway and, of course, his earliest surviving iron experiment, the Bishop's Road Bridge. Although he died 145 years ago, his inventions continue to be used by millions of people every day.